Local programming on KRWG made possible in part by viewers like you. Thank you. One of the most interesting roundtables we've had to date is a set of roundtables that we had with college students that were affiliated with the National Hispanic Institute. As you know, over the course of the last several episodes, we have been having a series of guests that have been recognized by the National Hispanic Institute uh, this past year, both college students of the year, uh, members of our own community in El Paso, Texas, uh, Paola Payan and Arthur Soto Vasquez being guests on our show, talking about the future of our community. For this series of shows, there is a brand new thing going on in our community. The Collegiate Leadership Network decided to have its found, one of its foundational meetings in our own community, and it brought in a series of different players of the National Hispanic Institute at an international level to discuss the future of our community. So we thought here at Fronteras we would invite a handful of guests to discuss what kind of ideas hold uh, do they hold about our own future? And so joining us here on set today, we have welcoming all of them back because all of them have been part of our shows in the past. We have the president of the National Hispanic Institute, Ernesto Nieto. We also have NHI's College Student of the Year from El Paso, Texas, Paola Payan. We also have member of the Collegiate Leadership Network of the National Hispanic Institute, Melissa Zambrano, also from El Paso, Texas, and all the way from Monterrey, Mexico. We also have another member of the Collegiate Leadership Network of the National Hispanic Institute, Gabriela Morales, to have a discussion about, well, a little bit about the future of our community. One of the big things that we discuss at NHI is the whole concept of our future and how we need to be able to imagine new things. Ernie, I think uh, in our last show together, you and I discussed a little bit about how we need to unlearn what we've learned. And, and I know that at the Collegiate Leadership Network, one of the big topics of discussion here in El Paso about the future of this new group that is doing things on an international scale, all bright young minds, is to, to somehow be able to put aside everything they've learned up to this point and, and be able to conceptualize new models, new strategies, new thought that can lead to new forms of leadership in, in, in our community on, a, on an international scale. And at NHI, we call it third reality. And we were talking a little bit about this in our, in our show prior to this one. Flesh that out a little bit for us. I mean, I'm sure a lot of audience members would love to know, what does that mean? Well, I wanna have a little fun with us and see them here and so uh, we know us several things first I think it's important to establish that NHI is a very serious think tank of ideas about leadership in the Latino community we've been doing this for 32 years so no comenzamos ayer we didn't start yesterday uh, secondly we know that we're headed into the future we are into the future so third reality has to do with learning to or focusing in on what is it that we have to do about things we believe to be true, things, assumptions we make about life, como Latinos, as Latinos, uh, things that we think are going to bear out, uh, learning how to critically examine what are the truths and assumptions and beliefs that have brought us to this point, and what is it about those things that we have to change, alter, modify, and replace as we head into the 21st century. Do the old models work in the 21st century? Probably not. What about the roles of men and women? What about family and, fa and children? What about how we educate ourselves? Do we simply go to college? Do we internationalize ourselves? Do we accept a global view of who we are? Or do we accept a minority view? And finally, do we see ourselves as a deficit, as a community filled with problems, reports, all this crud that we see uh, published daily by the news and by the media, or do we see ourselves as an asset community that has a powerful presence in the world and in particular in the United States? You mentioned, you mentioned words like, they, they catch certainly my attention, uh, crud. Very big word, and I, I mean, I, I kind of now engage the rest of the table. Um, one of the big things that, that stood out to me 
at Celebración, which was our annual summit where the CLN had its initial meeting. Now it's having its second inceptional meeting here in El Paso. Um, you, you made a statement, Ernesto, and I, I'd like to get everybody's uh, reaction to that statement and as, as well as your commentary, that the Institute was declaring war on the models of the past. I think that was a very bold statement. Mm -hmm. And, and, and maybe and somewhere, you're, maybe, maybe, but, <laughs> but maybe one where even some, some of your colleagues that have founded other organizations are thinking, okay, what, what is Ernesto doing? So uh, first of all, reaction from us, all, all of you, which all of you were there for that particular statement that was made. Y your ideas, I mean, you're, you're members now of this new board that's forming. Uh, your thoughts about that? I feel like that, that statement was made just now but it had been true for a while now. Like we have been fighting past models for a long time, but I don't think anybody had actually said it that way. Like we're declaring war. Like now it's, it's more aggressive. It's more like into the point. What, what does that mean? And I think that <laughs> it also made it a lot more clear for um, all the other students who are not only you know part of the CLN, but part of the YLC or the LDZ or the CWS, that it's not enough to just go to this program during the summer or be part of NHI you know, during the summer, but it is a lifelong commitment where uh, you really are trying to change not only your community, but the world at the end. It started in high school with your programs. It's, you change the way that you think. You change the way you see the world. You change the way you see yourself and your peers and your community. It's, it's a whole new thought process. You know, I, I, I find it strange that I may declare war, okay? <laughs> but I still see young people at your age being very resistant mm -hmm. because you have these mental models that say, well, you're supposed to finish college by this time. You're supposed to get a job and you got mommy to, ya te casaste, mija, ya tienes boyfriend. <laughs> you know, that, that uh, does and, happen, and you're yes. constantly being told that you're supposed to follow a pattern yes. mm -hmm. and that if you don't, you're out of step with who we are. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I know that I would like to hear the conversation about what are the most important changes? What are the things that we most have to unlearn as we head as a community into the future? Uh, as a female, male, male, uh, together as a community, what are those changes? I want to <laughs> hear yours. <laughs> Oh, um, and really this was important. the question at the Collegiate Leadership it's Network, really a big one on the table. for us to uh, know what is the reason behind our decisions. And before I think, um, and I, I would go ahead and generalize, that we would base our decisions on what people have taught us, um, you know, that is the acceptable thing to do. And it is acceptable to graduate from high school and then go to college, and graduate from college in four years, and then get a job. And once you get a job, you start a family. And um, we, we decided that because people told us that that's how it was done. So, so time and out. What are you saying? Let's drop out of college? No, I'm not saying let's <laughs> I drop mean, out I of college. I just say. But let's, let's really think about why you, you are in college and why you're studying whatever it is that you want to study and what you're going to do with it and what real impact is it going to have not only in your life but in the lives that you are touching. And so it... We, I think that it's really important to unlearn why we're doing things and look within ourselves for those reasons. Still kind of fluffy. I mean, <laughs> you know. Well, wait, wait, wait. I, I, I get told, uh, you know, <laughs> I get told, uh, guys, the same way. I'm going to be married by 22. I'm going to do graduate studies, big deal, and I'm going to have kids. Everything happens before the magic 30. Yes. <laughs> it's the magic 30, right? So that's what I'm declaring war on because I believe that that is not the future. I believe, and I say it all the time, that the, the greatest commodity you have that freedom. your predecessors did not have is called freedom. Mm -hmm. And you're going to give it away and strap yourself like a husky well, in Alaska, <laughs> and someone's going to say, well, let's go. I don't think that it's fair to be like, we're not free once you're you know, married or in a relationship. Or yeah, whatever. but I think that we feel, even though we may not admit it or we may not outright say it, we feel a lot of pressure to just follow the conventional ways. You know, I, I feel like I have to graduate in four years or else that's going to mm -hmm. be a failure. I have to be dating someone or be married or, you know, that has to at least be in my future. My dad says, 
I'm old enough to be married and have a family now. I'm 20 years old. I'm in college. <laughs> um, I rest my case. <laughs> so, but it's so true. I think it would just be old cat lady. And that's what happens with when you have a family that, that w raised you that way and that's so conservative. Like, my mom is really conservative, and I actually just had this conversation with her because she asked me, like, so are you ever going to get married? Like, and I told her, like, it's not my priority. If you ask me what I, where I want to be in five years or ten years, that's not, like, in my plans. If it happens, it happens. But, yeah. like. So are we saying, though, that the, okay, so here we are. Someone from Monterrey, El Paso, you know, now the president of the National Hispanic Institute, talking about, is what we're saying is a consensus around the table that uh, yeah. somehow the models that our community has been following, that are traditional models of family values or uh, what people conceptualize as traditional education, are, are we saying outdated. that those are leading us astray? Yeah, I think that <laughs> they're um, outdated. Yeah, and that normal doesn't have to be normal anymore. If you have, if you're strong enough to go beyond what society defines as normal, define your own normal. Mm -hmm. So, what is your own normal? My own normal? I'm still trying to figure that out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a hard question. Well, that, that, that's the whole question. point of the adventure. Mm -hmm. isn't it? Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Figuring it out step by step, and it's just trying to figure out what I want to do with my life, not what I'm going to do or what's going to happen next year who I'm going to touch, how I'm going to change lives, how I'm going to change the world, how I'm going to change myself as I do that. What, what I wanted to focus in on, third reality, is a tearing away from those beliefs. Mm -hmm. Okay? It's, it's, that's the war. The war is in us, not out there in the community. Mm -hmm. It is in how we perceive, how we interpret, and how we conclude. So my question to them, I guess, I, I'd like to know, as young women, how do you unlearn what you have been taught to learn so that not, no longer guides what it is you're going to do? How do you unlearn it? A process? I think that can be, I, th I think it can be a really hard process. I think you kind of have to go through um, being criticized by society, by your peers, by the people around you, by your friends, by even your family, and then realizing that it's not really what they say or what everyone else is telling you that defines you and that you can still be yourself and be your own person and you can still come out on top I suppose and still respect yourself without having the respect of the people around you. And I think it, it's a choice you have to make every day like for me it's been like that it's a choice that you make every day not to follow into the mainstream because it's very easy to just try to you know be comfortable and go ahead and keep the beliefs that you have but it's a choice that you have to make every day and when you start meeting people who are making these choices mm -hmm. every day as well, like like we are, then it's easier because then you have support and then you're actually making these kinds of questions like within ourselves and we make them every day to keep up and not to mm -hmm. fall back into the and mainstream. And that's where NHI comes in. It's, it's kind of like the support system where you're not the only one that's going through the process. And you know, there's people that are around your same age, older, younger, whatever, uh, that are going through the same process. So it's telling you it's okay, it's not, you know, completely different, you're not going crazy, it, you're not going through a crisis. It is perfectly acceptable to question you know, what's going on around your life and to say, hey, wait a minute, is this really what I want to do? But, but I have the same issue at the institutional level, that while families, or you're having to deal with family beliefs and truths mm -hmm. and assumptions, mm -hmm. then you deal with institutional beliefs, mm -hmm. truths and assumptions, mm -hmm. that the school thinks, public education thinks, that your main job is to become workforce ready. I rarely hear a principal or a school board member saying, we're in the business of creating world leaders. No, we're in the business of creating workers. And, and so they leave with that same mentality. I'm gonna to go to college so that I can become a worker. And that's the other big pull down about who are we and how do we combat and un unlearn what we're being taught by institutions who claim to be doing good things and are really strapping us in our views and our emotions and our understanding and then all of the baggage that comes with it, Hector, being a minority, uh, disadvantage, at risk, and all the things that limit how a child views and perceives and interprets the world. I don't know how we help our public administrators realize you're doing a disservice here you're doing a real disservice. Even though you get all kinds of funding for it, because federal government will give you millions of dollars to reduce all these problems. Well, I, I, I'd like to kind of get into that. I mean, we've thrown, we've thrown around a lot, of, a lot of big terminology, 
you know, third reality, something yeah. that's very uh, perhaps exclusive to NHI alumni. Uh, mainstream, uh, a lot of words being utilized about it. it's hard to uh, not be part of the mainstream. Mm -hmm. Uh, collegiate Leadership Network, kind of tackling on new ideas, trying to develop new models. Mm -hmm. Some concrete examples of, of, of what you guys are talking about. Uh, Ernesto, I mean, I know you talk a lot about, you know, uh, how we need to change the outlook of institutions, yet after 32 years of work, NHI is affiliated with some of the most renowned institutions on, on this country and in many others. I mean, institutions like a Stanford, an MIT, a Southwestern, a Villanova, institutions of that caliber. So, so, so what is the difference? What is mainstream? And when you guys talk about new ideas, uh, concrete examples, anyone on the table? What, what do you mean? <laughs> concrete examples, like how do you implement those new ideas? How do you make them real? How is it different from what everyone else is doing? Become a writer. <laughs> thought you know, uh, produce new film, produce new music, produce new art forms, produce new aesthetics, produce new understandings of what politics is about. Mm -hmm. It's not hierarchical, it's communal, it's, it's, it's equity building, new terminology to guide our vision rather than the old. Organize around all of the opportunities rather than all of the problems and que nos están dando en la fregada, right? All, all <laughs> that kind of language that tends to make us angry people, make us wealth builders versus problem solvers. Mm -hmm. uh, that's how you begin to, the nomenclature first is important to begin to frame how our children will think in the future. I'm sorry, public education is not doing that. And yet MIT and Harvard, they're not doing it either. Mm -hmm. And it's very important for us to say to them, hey, you look at us as disadvantaged people. Come on, we're your people of color, remember? <laughs> so you're saying there's a lot more. Oh, tons, tons, mm -hmm. for the next 100 years. So okay? what is that more from the current NHI alumni, members of Collegiate Leadership Network, uh, board of directors for them, and the, okay. and, and, and the NHI College Student of the Year? What, what more is there beyond just a uh, Latino student? Well, I think that it's a large, once again, as the, as the name says it, it's a large network of Latino students who aren't just working by themselves. We're working together right now. We're uh, you know, working on the constitution for the Collegiate Leadership Network and how can we bounce ideas off each other and which ideas can we carry through and, and what determines um, you know, whose idea is going to be carried through and whose isn't and how can we keep in touch with each other and how can we um, build off of each other instead of trying to say, well, Gabby's in Monterrey and Gabby's my direct competition because we're going for the same job. That's a great thought. Uh, great thought. And, you know, how can we work together so that we can build something greater than the job that we were both going to be applying for? Well, what are some of the ideas that have been discussed at Collegiate Leadership Network circles? I know there's a lot of projects mm -hmm. that have been discussed, uh, some that began at Celebración others that are now being furthered here in El Paso when you guys have your, your second uh, inceptional meeting. What, 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 does, what do some of these ideas look like? Growth, <laughs> a lot of growth and expansion for uh, the network and for the institute. Well, I know you guys were talking about doing some kind of event, a simultaneous event, one in Monterrey and one, yes. one in... Yes, yeah, we, we, were, we were trying to figure out how to fundraise money, but also get everybody involved. Because, because especially now that we're like in an international level, we have people from the Dominican Republic, from Mexico, from Panama, we were trying to see if we could do a simultaneous event, that it would be at the same time in every single mm -hmm. country and state to fundraise and get all of the mm -hmm. NHIRs involved at the mm -hmm. same time. And even in smaller communities, because let's say people from Eagle Pass aren't, you know, exactly she next to El Paso. You just Eagle Pass. No. I just wanted to no, 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 I mean, you can't say people, Los Cruz is in El Paso is what, 30 minutes away? Absolutely. Eagle Pass and El Paso isn't the same. So you don't only have to have events in large cities. Let's say there's a large presence of NHI in Eagle Pass or in you know, mm -hmm. uh, Georgetown, Texas, or you know, wherever, where have you. Uh, there can be smaller events or even mm -hmm. big events uh, in those areas too mm -hmm. that are happening simultaneously. Didn't put Eagle Pass I, I think a lot of people <laughs> would ask you, or maybe have asked you, uh, Ernie, did you put them up to this? <laughs> did, I mean, did, you, did you put them up to this? Uh, or, or, you, know, I, I think I, you know, I think what's going on with them is that <laughs> they're taking NHI to the next level. Uh, 
I think what we're going to see is the evolution of new ideas, uh, yet untested, right? Uh, I think they have the gumption, the drive, the determination to make those ideas succeed. I am terribly excited about what they're thinking about. Uh, I'm going to ask them questions just to challenge their thinking and to be who I am. <laughs> I'm always going to be the guy that asks questions because I know more, but because I know that by asking <laughs> difficult questions, they come up with better answers. Mm -hmm. And that's the whole purpose of my questioning. But the point is, is that it's time for us to let go. I'm talking about us old timers. Let go of thinking that we have the answers for them and for us to join them as part of this community of learners and to simply admire the process and be enablers so that they can test, make adjustments as necessary, make mistakes, learn from mistakes, make it even better. I see a great world of Latinos. I don't lo no longer see them because of this woman sitting around. It's now global. Mm. It's now global. We're, we're not minorities. It's a new, a whole new nomenclature of who we are. You, you already know, 99.3% this past year of our graduated high school seniors enrolled in college, 99%. That's amazing. I mean, people salivate all over themselves for that kind. <laughs> Latinos in this world is like this large untapped reservoir of oil. We are the new oil of tomorrow's future. And NHI is going to be part of the refinery to develop that into potent intellectual capacity. And that's what excites me as I near my years and realize that I have a limited time, and I understand that. But would I do this trip all over again? Hell yeah, man. And I think this is one of the best examples about how we're taking initiative. We're not waiting for someone to tell us that we need to get together mm -hmm. in a certain program at a certain time. We're doing it ourselves. Now we're taking over and we're not, you know, like expecting someone to be like on top of us or just like letting yeah. us know this is what you're going to do and how you're going to do it. Exactly. Yeah. On the same note, we're still, you know, working towards <laughs> not seeking approval and just realizing that yes. what we are creating is going to be awesome and going for it instead of going to the next generation or the older generation and Nasty seeking approval. That's the same kind of thing as we're not used to having freedom, I suppose. We're we, not used to utilizing it, taking opportunities. We have like a few minutes. We're going to have to do it again, and we're going to have to <laughs> continue uh, a, a discussion like this. But um, 85,000 alumni thus far. Mm -hmm. NHI has quietly become the largest Latino youth organization in the Americas. Uh, pretty big stuff, you know. <laughs> uh, what, are the, what are the, the, you brought it here 32 years, Ernesto. So what do the next 30 years look like? I think that we're, we're, we're going from programs and the experiences of programs, like the Lorenzo de Zavala, the LDZ, the Collegiate World Series, the CLN, the Great Debate. People know those programs. We're going to a concept of community building where it's much more comprehensive and much more lasting and enduring and I think they're going to have to come up with ideas called sustaining ideas mm -hmm. that involves idea, theory, application, and money. And our whole understanding of that is going to change, that we're no longer giving because it's our responsibility to give. We are wealth building now. And mm -hmm. the whole concept behind giving, instead of charity as it has been, is going to become wealth building intellectually of Latino youth of tomorrow. What's the role of all of you around the table in the next 30 years? Uh, to, make sure <laughs> <laughs> to make sure that any tie is not you know, selling programs. It's selling an ideology and it's selling a, a oh, lifestyle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's possibly carry through a vehicle of programs and some are you know, programs or whatever. But we're not selling seven days in, you know, uh, in Southwestern summer. University. Mm -hmm. We're selling a lifestyle and a life choice. Days a year. <laughs> exactly, and a life what, what choice. What is that life ideology. choice? Okay, uh, you're, you're again, and we're down to like the last two minutes. So, what is that life choice? <laughs> Giving, well, I think it's it gives you the courage, um, asking you to come up with the courage to uh, question not only you know others, but question yourself, your own beliefs, and your own beliefs, and and what is it that I think or that I believe makes me me. And why do I believe that? And what 
is you to the core? What does it mean to be Hector Lopez or Ernesto Nieto? Um, and how are people going to remember me? You know, what wow. am I going to do so that that's, that's true? Are there naysayers? No. <laughs> <laughs> There's none? No, and I'm I think sorry. that another part of it is realizing how connected we all are, and that's mm -hmm. kind of part of the network that we're um, trying to build upon right now, that we all have this brain power that we can kind of, I guess, link together, mm -hmm. and that just, it like just multiplies. <laughs> um, <so laughs> we're trying to become one person. <laughs> I just <laughs> As I'm listening to this conversation, I'm old enough to know previous conversations 40 years ago, right? And it was all about, look at all our problems, we got to get organized. That's not the language anymore here. No. It's a different language. It's a very different language, it's a very different set of symbols. And I really credit everyone associated, this has not been me, Hector, this has been a community out there redefining itself. And so I think that it speaks for a future that I'm going to be very excited to see, and I want my granddaughters to be <laughs> certainly be a part of it. Folks, unfortunately, we've come to the, the conclusion of this roundtable. We're going to continue the roundtable discussion, uh, certainly in, in other episodes to come. Uh, the National Hispanic Institute has become the, the quietly the largest Latino youth organization in this nation and the Americas, uh, with bright young minds from all over seven different countries. If you want to get involved with the organization, you can definitely uh, get a hold of it at www.nhi-net.org. Until next time, it's been a pleasure. Have a good evening. I'm Hector H. Lopez. <laughs>